Good morning, and welcome to your daily Farm and Home Show, brought to you by the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service. And now, here's your host. Good morning and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles and this morning we're visiting with Dr. Jonathan Larson. He's with the University of Kentucky Extension Entomologist there. Good morning. Nice to see you. Now, you've just started with this, yep. <laughs> <laughs> First time on, I've only been here since August 1st. All right, yep. so, but you've been studying insects for a long time. Long time, been an entomologist for a while now. Yeah. See, it feels like a long time. Really. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're gonna talk a little bit about galls yep. and I've always been fascinated by Is them. It? I'm sure if they're on your tree, they're not <laughs> near as fun, but when people, when clients bring these in, I always think they're fascinating. They're really cool. It's a really unique way of trying to develop in the world. Insects, they always find all those interesting niches, right? Some of them, they are leaf miners. They live between those leaf layers. But these ones, they actually trick the plant into building a house for them. And I've always thought that was a really neat way to survive. And it causes a very, it presents a very challenging way to get rid of them. Absolutely. But it is fascinating how they, <laughs> they now you've brought along some examples for I us. Did. So let's talk about some of these. Okay, I brought a few examples here today. We've got in the front here, these are two different hackberry sets. They both present hackberry nipple gall, which is a very common gall, particularly here in Kentucky. It gets its name. If you ever want to name a gall, you figure out what the tree is first and uh -huh. then what shape the gall is. And then you put those together and that's what you get. So hackberry nipple gall. Uh, this one, if you cut it open, there's a small little larva inside that eventually turns into a psyllid as an adult. They're very prevalent, but they don't cause a lot of damage for the tree. It looks weird, but it's not gonna cause any hazard for your plant. So if a homeowner were to go out or and see this, mm -hmm then they should maybe shouldn't get that alarmed? No, I wouldn't be very alarmed by this at all. In fact, this probably means that your tree is pretty healthy. If you rake these leaves up and dispose of them here in the fall, you can help to cut down on some of the, the ones emerging, but overall it's not gonna present an issue for the plant. Okay, so that's good news. It might look a little weird now. You brought along a photo. Is uh -huh. this what emerges that's from those galls? So the cute little baby is inside of there, and this is this is mama here. She's gonna lay some eggs here in a little bit. So how long does how long does that process usually take? They develop over the summer. We'll see these uh, psyllids start emerging. They can come out in big numbers, and they can land on windows, and that can be a problem, which is why some folks want to remove the hackberry nipple gall from the landscape. But on the plant itself, it's not a problem. This is more of a home invader issue. Gotcha. Yep. All right. So not gonna. And most people, when they bring this in, they're more concerned about their tree. Right. Exactly. And whether it's gonna live or not. Now these are quite. They're smaller galls. A little bit tinier, uh, kind of fuzzy. I want to feel one. Do you want to touch one? Yeah, let me feel one. What you... Ooh, they are fuzzy. It's like <laughs> hair or something. Yeah, I, I think it feels like a willow kind yeah. of a bud or something like that. Uh, this is called the fuzzy oak gall, again, as, <laughs> as we talked about before. So there's a little insect in there again. A lot of these are caused by wasps in most cases, so little sinipid wasps. They're stingless. They can't hurt you, but they do poke their ovipositor, their needle-like egg layer, into a plant, and some of the secretions that they exude out cause the plant to form these tumor-like growths around their larva so they have somewhere to live and to feed as they grow. Yeah. So, so is this detrimental to the plant? Nope. Uh, none of the ones I brought with me today are going to be too problematic for the plant. These are all just kind of entomological curiosities, weird okay. things to find in the landscape. Another example here would be the uh, oak bullet gall. This one can sometimes be a problem. They have a larva in there that's exuding out honeydew, that sugary sap-like mm. poop that some insects have. Mm -hmm. And when they do that, it actually attracts yellow jackets and other stinging insects. So that's the problem we associate with them. But these, luckily, they're pretty easy just to snap off the plant. So if you can reach up and get to them that way or even prune them out, mm -hmm. you're going to see a lot less problems. And this that. one's on the stem where these other ones are on the leaf. Yep, sometimes they like woody tissue. Sometimes they prefer the leafy tissue. Uh, it just depends on the species. Okay. All right. And then we've got an oak cherry gall here that's kind of small in its development. And this one is an oak apple gall. And if we wanted to, we could actually cut that one okay. open. It's going to get a little bigger. And this is the photo bigger. that yeah. you have on, on the apple tree? Or oh, would you it, say that it's, it's on oak? It's an oak apple gall. Okay, so, so it, it looks, looks, like, an looks apple. like an apple. Yeah, I'm going to get it's... this whole naming thing down, right? <laughs> and so he's going to cut into it. And it's kind of corky on the inside. But you can see there's a little hole in the center. And that's where the larva develops inside of the gall. And so, I think I cut it in half, so I, I killed it live on TV. <laughs> <laughs> so there's enough food in the gall? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're able to eat on whatever it is that develops in there, or even sometimes sap and other exudates that kind of come out of the gall. And do some of these insects emerge at different times, I'm they, assuming? Some of them emerge in the fall, some of them emerge in the summer. It just depends, again, on what species you're talking about. So it's mostly insects, but there are some mites that cause galls. 
They're called areophyid mites. They're kind of banana shaped. If you were to get them under a microscope, you can see them on maple trees. If you see little things that look like nerds, uh, the candy developing on the bottom of your maple leaves, then it's probably full of mites if you cut it open. All Those right. also get into ashes sometimes and cause some problems. Very interesting information. Certainly appreciate you being here. And if you have questions, make sure to contact your local extension office. Thanks for watching and have a great day. If you have questions about today's topic, please call the Warren County Extension Office at the number on your screen. Thanks for watching and have a great day.